Happy Monday, November 8th. Today is a special, special day for me in that it kind of marks the first real week of me focusing on, you know, kind of getting back into the YouTube situation and um, taking it a little more seriously, building up and kind of picking up where I left off. Um, and so with that, I'm going to do a really cool little short video um, talking about uh, matching the hatch. And so I'm going to do a little series here, my match the hatch series. And we're going to talk about the different prey species that are in my geographic area, which is central Texas, and what I'm used to doing year to year, and what I know works. and you know, with Match the Hatch, um, part of it is talking about the different profiles and the speeds. Profiles and speeds. Very, very key. Um, you have to be sort of a magician. It sounds kind of silly, but you got to be creative and you have to be fluid and dynamic and thoughtful. And so let's just talk, I guess, let's get started talking about a few of the different uh, presentations that you can make to be a crawfish. That's going to be my part one, being a crawfish. So <clears throat> there's three baits that I'm really going to look at in being a crawfish. One is a crankbait. Okay, that can be a deep diver, a mid diver, a square bill, whatever. It's just the fact that it's a hard plastic shell bait that's moving quickly, fairly quickly, through the strike zone. And I'm just going to kind of go through these. The next one's the jig. Okay, so, you know, a lot of times during the winter, when the fish are relating to the rocks and they're warming up, I know that they're eating crawfish. I'll be a jig if I'm not being a crankbait. The third one is just a general soft plastic. You know, that could be like a Texas rig beaver style bait. It could be like a little Berkeley power craw. <clears throat> and so I'm employing these tools in a strategic way to be able to capitalize on bites and uh, trigger strikes in situations where it can be difficult. Um, there's efficiency that I'm thinking about. There's a lot of different things, you know. Why would I move slow if I can move fast, you know, with throwing a crankbait? But if they don't hit a crankbait, what do I need to do to scale back? Do I need to pick up a jig? Do I need to pick up just a a bare soft plastic without any skirt. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just kind of pull up a couple different crankbaits, a couple different jigs, stuff like that, just to showcase, you know, where my head's at typically with um, picking out baits. So the crankbait, I'll just type in craw, uh, craw square bill in good old tackle warehouse. It's not really important which one I'm pulling up right now. Um, and I'm not going to spend too much time on each category, be it crankbait, jig, soft plastic, FY. The main thing is just showing you um, what's available. And this is being kind of slow. Um, these are like little, little square bell crankbaits, you know, these happen to have, um, kind of a 45 pitch on the bill on the front. But the whole point is, is that <clears throat> if I'm shallow, um, I'm using the, the, the square bill. If I'm a little deeper, the mid diver, a little deeper, deep diver, let's not make it complicated. The main thing is, is if I can get away with speed, 
and I know the fish are spread out, then I'm going to capitalize on that and I'm going to maximize the bites that I'm getting. It's a strategy. I can't, if I can get away with the moving bait, I'm going to throw it all the time. If I can't, I'm going to have to slow down and I'm going to have to be very confident that the area I'm fishing has a lot of fish in it and it's worth sitting at for a while. <clears throat> so really what's important to me talking about these crankbaits and matching the hatch, I would say the main one is color. I want to find something that looks like what I see in the water. So I'm looking for fish that are spitting up craw, uh, you know, crawdads, maybe in my live well or whatever. That's a real popular one. But um, <clears throat> and I'm also turning over rocks, and I'm looking um, near the boat ramp and stuff to see what color they are, what time of year it is. You know, has a lot to do with the watercolor. There's different things, biological things that. I don't really know the full extent of, but I know enough to recognize that when I see a certain color crawfish, that's what I'm going to throw. Um, so <clears throat> the color, also uh, how tight things wobble with crankbaits is important. When it gets really cold, I want things to, to wobble a little bit tighter and put off less of an aggressive action. <clears throat> Um, everything's metabolism drops in the winter, so that's important to try to uh, match that as best as possible. Um, so I would say that's important, but you don't want to go too narrow on the bait, in my opinion, because I also there's a, there's a balance between the tight wobble being dictated by the profile of the bait, <clears throat> and also the general shape not being compromised where I want it to represent kind of the teardrop, traditional teardrop style when it's moving quickly through the water of what the crawfish looks like when it folds up and darts backwards. Um, so like I said, if I can get away with throwing the crankbait and moving quickly, that's what I'm doing. Um, the next one I would say is the jig. It's a little bit, I would say it's right in between crankbait and soft plastic. It's a little bit more action. There's levels to a jig where you can go from a huge jig to a not so big jig to a small jig. And just the step down in that tier, uh, it's like tiers, right? Of, you know, hey, this can either A, draw a bigger fish, maybe less bites, but maybe they're more active and more, you know, their metabolism is a little bit higher. Maybe I can get away with throwing a bigger bait. Um, there's a balance between that and, you know, hey, I want to get more bites. I'm going to go to a really small one. I can still catch big fish on it, but um, I'm not actively, uh, how do you say it, like, I'm not filtering out, you know, for the big bites. I'm just trying to get more bites. And if they're a little less aggressive, maybe, and their metabolism's a little slower, um, maybe I can get away with, you know, throwing that little bait, getting a little bit more volume percentage strikes. So I'll manipulate the, the size. Um, and then sometimes the size follows the weight. Generally, the big weights are a little bit bulkier. Um, but the situation with the jig, I'm either going to be flipping that jig or I'm going to be kind of throwing it out and, and popping it off the bottom. The same way that uh, a crawfish darts back kind of um, erratically. That's so important. It's so important to understand how a crawfish looks in different phases and uh, uh, the different dispositions that it has during the day. So like if it's in a situation where it's crawling around, you know, that's one thing. That's one, that's one type of disposition which this prey can take, right? 
And if it's threatened and it's trying to get away, it's like this popping. And so I, I can sometimes pop the rod tip, you know, and, and get it to dart. But sometimes they want it really slow and kind of kind of dragging it to where it's just kind of meandering along the bottom. And there's a balance in, in understanding uh, which one to employ. Um, but I think in order of activity, crankbait, jig, and then soft plastic, which we'll talk about. But the soft plastic, I could still move fairly quickly, but I could really slow it down and there's not as much of a secondary action. And what I mean by that is with the jig, you've got the skirt and then typically people put a trailer on the hook and you have the action of the soft plastic trailer, which might not be as loud in the water as it is when you add that heavy skirt. So you drop down a notch in, uh, in the, the uh, profile when you go to that bare soft plastic. And so, you know, there's little things. I mentioned the Berkeley Power Crop. This is one of the all-time greatest crawfish baits, okay? Uh, it's freaking amazing. It is freaking amazing. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to find the little one. The little Berkeley Power Craw is what I want to find. Um, if I can't find it, I'm going to be kind of pissed. Okay, 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 okay. This right here is it. One of the best of all time, in my opinion. Um, but the whole point is, is I don't want to get into this thing on baits and, oh, it's got to be this bait and all that. i just showing you what I like, whatever. It's not loading, but you got the point. You saw what it was, that right there. Um... But that's just a little less profile. It's all about profiles and speed. So I go from the crankbait, a lot of speed. You can have varying degrees of profile depending on if you go to an oversized square bill or a crankbait to more of a small little. You know, they got, I've looked at square bills before where they've got one yay big and yay big. And it's like, you can you can modify and change up your strike frequency and do different things with you know filtering out size by just manipulating those with even the same speed that you're retrieving them at. Then you pick up that jig, it's a little less speed, but there's varying profiles. There's like a big jig, there's a little micro jig. There's like the little finesse jigs, the stand, the ball head. There's all these different jigs. You can you can employ different actions on them. You can pop them. You can drag it like a football head. You can drag a football head. You can high hop it. They're really active in the summer. But also important to note is is that which I can get into too. The different seasons during the year the fish are relating to the bottom or they're looking up they're looking down or they're looking up or they're kind of in the middle of the water column swimming around so you know in, in understanding where they're looking and where they're focusing is a big part of it and sometimes it's because of temperature gradients and oxygen and different different things there's just seasonality to this whole food chain um but then you go down to that soft plastic and then it's like, hey, I'm at the, the once again, the lowest, the lowest tier, I think, in terms of speed. You know, you can, you can, you can flip it and fly it right past the fish. But in terms of, 
it's it's not it's not as swift as a crankbait. The jig might fall a little bit slower, but I I, I usually associate a, a, the really and maybe speed's the wrong word, but just overall profile. You know, crankbait's like, hey, I'm really active. It's really active. Jig's like, yeah, it's moderately active. Bite. And soft plastic is like, hey, I got. It. I'm trying to get some bites here. So, you know, but but looking, like I said, paying attention to where the fish is focusing. You know, there's times when they're looking up, chasing bait. They're following bait around the lake. You know, day to day it changes. What's, you know, is it is it uh, is the water really still in the morning? Is the sun out? Is it not out? Is it is it choppy water? Is it not choppy water? Do the clouds have all the bait and all the the stuff down in the water column? It just changes all the time. Um, but if you know the crawfish, obviously doesn't, you know, live at the top of the water column. It lives on the bottom. So what we're talking about is more of a, you know. Um, the time of year when the fish are more related to the bottom, which I think is the colder, uh, the colder months when they get on rocks, and they are utilizing the heat of the rocks to regulate their body temperature in the same way lizards do, or any type of, you know, cold-blooded animal. Um, that's what they do. So I'm thinking about how do I get the bait at the level in the water column where they're focusing more of their time and get it close to them when their metabolism is slow so they don't have to expend as much energy to get to recover calories. Um, so yeah, I, for whatever, for what it's worth, let's just call it combination of speed and overall profile because there's a little discrepancy there that I pointed out with the jig versus the plastic, you know, you can do different things. So I would say first level of activity, crankbait, second jig, third soft plastic. Take it for what it's worth. Um, but just, just recognizing those differences is so important. Looking at the color, okay? So in summary, just kind of recognizing the differences, playing, you know, playing your cards at the appropriate time, looking at color, looking at size, looking at the movement that the bait takes. Are you throwing a are you throwing a crankbait out there that's, you know, drifting, you know, back and forth? Is it a lipless crankbait? That's another one. Is it a lipless crankbait? What, you know, there's there's just so much so much variability in what you can do. Um it's pretty amazing. But this is when the fish are looking down. It's the colder part of the part of the year, and uh, that's kind of a little intro. I don't I don't want to go too far and take too much time. Already 18 minutes, 19 minutes into the video, but that's what I'm going to call part one to think about and digest. Part two is going to be another species. It could be bluegill. It could be threadfin shad. What have you. Um, but that is my first real kind of interesting video that I've had for a while, so I'm excited about it. Take what you can from it, learn from it. I, uh, I feel pretty good about being able to share that information with people who are interested. So um, thank you for your time, and stay tuned for part two coming later this week. Thanks.